Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about how I survived the first trimester. Sometimes I don't really know how, but here I am. Um, I'm going to be discussing things in a very honest and open way. I know often pregnancy and pregnancy announcements are glamorized online and everything looks perfect. That just wasn't my experience, so I want to share how I felt during the first trimester, including experiencing anxiety, depression, and very bad morning sickness. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So why did we decide to get pregnant now? Um, unfortunately, I got some bad news, some bad test results from the hospital, and a doctor advised me to start trying to have a baby now if having a family was something I saw in my future. Dane and I both wanted to have children. It's something we discussed before we got married. So we ultimately decided to start trying now. We did actually get pregnant on the first try, which was kind of a surprise. I think part of the reason we got pregnant straight away was because I read this book called The Impatient Woman's Guide to Getting Pregnant. And in this book, the author lists a lot of useful information to help improve your chances of conception. I think the main thing I did that helped us was tracking my ovulation. But I also did other things like my checking my body basal temperature, taking prenatal vitamins and having a healthy diet. I'm also sober. I've been sober since the end of last year. I haven't really shared much about that on this channel. But yeah, I think not drinking is always a good idea if you are trying to conceive. So let's talk about my ectopic pregnancy scare. So a week after I found out I was pregnant, I had done some home pregnancy tests. I started having a really bad shooting pain in my lower abdomen on one side. I also had dizziness and um, headaches. So we ended up going to the emergency room and the doctors were very concerned it was an ectopic pregnancy. My HCG level was lower than it should have been for that stage in my pregnancy. They checked my blood work and they did an internal ultrasound, but they couldn't actually see um, a gestational sac in my uterus. So we were all very concerned. Um, I ended up going back to the hospital three or four times over a two week period and they did the same tests again and they kept doing an ultrasound. By the end of the two weeks, they saw the gestational sac on the scan in my uterus. So it was a viable pregnancy. So that was a big relief. I really wanted to be like happy in that moment but I just felt so exhausted and so emotional. Um, I really don't know how I felt at that time, but yes, thankfully it was not an ectopic pregnancy, but it definitely wasn't the best start to being pregnant. So after I got the good news that my pregnancy was viable, I had a few days of just calm, of happiness, and then around week five, week six, I started to experience the worst <laughs> ever morning sickness. Let me tell you, the first trimester is often called the survival trimester for a reason. I was extremely sick. I felt like I was going to throw up and I was throwing up. So I had to deal with both of those. I had headaches. I had dizziness. I was extremely sensitive to smells, literally the smell of anything, a candle, peanut butter, dog food. I could not stomach the smell of dog food. I was wearing a mask um, whenever I had to feed the dogs. And Dane wasn't here to like help because he was away for work for almost two months. The irony of feeling hungover was not lost on me. Six months into my sobriety to be experiencing the worst hangover of my life. I felt constantly sick. I had a headache. I couldn't eat. It was, it was awful. I was in and out of the hospital. They gave me different medications to try and help. Zofram, that didn't work. I had a sticker that I would put behind my ear that was supposed to stop me feeling sick for up to 72 hours. I don't know what that was, but that made me throw up every time. That did not work for me. Um, they, there was another medication that did work, but it made me incredibly drowsy and it gave me a headache. My daily routine was like waking up, trying to eat something like a piece of toast or some Rice Krispies. Then I would start to feel sick. 
So I would take my medication, which would make me very drowsy and give me a headache. And about three or four hours later, I'd fall asleep. And then when I woke up, we would repeat the process. So <laughs> it was definitely not glamorous. It really started to affect my mental health. There would be days, like days and days, I'd go without showering because I didn't have the energy. So I would just be lying down on the sofa, feeling sorry for myself. I did actually end up going into the hospital for my, it was my intake. I, I just broke down. I broke down in tears and I said, I'm really struggling. I think that feeling so sick is causing my anxiety to worsen and I was feeling quite depressed. Yeah, I think it was hard, harder because I was alone. But the midwife said, you know, it's okay. My feelings are valid. And she was, she was very empathetic. She said she struggled during her first pregnancy and that many mothers don't feel connected with their baby straight away. Sometimes they feel connected as the pregnancy goes on. Sometimes it's not until after the baby is born. That was very comforting to hear because I felt like a terrible mother or mother-to-be that I just didn't feel connected with my baby yet. She prescribed me an anti-anxiety, antidepressant medication, which is safe to take during pregnancy. She said that she took it during her pregnancy as well so that made me feel it just made me feel like I'm a normal person and it's okay to experience feeling depressed and disconnected from your baby in your pregnancy like that's normal and other people experience it too so yeah I have to say after about a week of taking that medication I honestly just felt so much better it was like night and day and it also coincided with the end of my first trimester which meant that a lot of my symptoms were improving and i wasn't feeling so sick and my appetite came back if you are struggling with your mental health during pregnancy speak out speak to a midwife or a doctor and don't be afraid to take medication it doesn't make you a bad person or a bad mother i've already touched on this briefly but let's talk about my cravings and aversions so Things that I was craving were Baby Bells. I really, really loved Baby Bells for a while and um, cereal Rice Krispies um, and semolina, which was a dessert I used to have at primary school. I don't know why, but I managed to order some uh, on Amazon and that's what I was craving. Adversions, pretty much everything else in the entire world that existed. Very strong smelling things like peanut butter, coffee. I absolutely can have them anywhere near me. So yeah, <laughs> I survived on Baby Bells and Rice Krispies. So the last thing that I did during my first trimester was have a genetic test done. I went into the hospital, I went to labs and they took like 10 vials of blood. It made me feel extremely faint. And basically they sent off my blood for testing to see if there were any genetic abnormalities of which there weren't. <laughs> they were also able to find out the gender. Now, <laughs> Dane wanted to wait until birth. Birth? No. And I wanted to find out immediately. So we compromised and we found out immediately. <laughs> Dane wasn't even here. He was still away for work. So we FaceTimed and let me tell you, I was in absolute shock. I could not believe it. It was the opposite of what I thought but I will be sharing the gender with you in another video and of course I will be sharing the rest of my pregnancy journey with you as well. Thank you for watching, please like, subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!